I'm running late again <laughs> this week. Um, surely third time is a charm, so next week maybe I'll have it all under control. I could not find the live button, <laughs> and apparently I have to be on my Always Stampin' page uh, to hit the live button. If I'm on my personal page and go to Always Stampin', it just lets me upload a video. It doesn't let me go live. So, um, so I found it, and we're live, and... Uh, yeah, I hope everybody wants to uh, join me again um, today and um, grow with me in God's Word. If you're new to this Bible journaling series um, on Facebook Live, what we're doing is every Monday evening at 7, 7 o'clock Eastern Time, um, we are talking, just chit-chatting about, um, hi Janie! Uh, what we um, are learning from God's Word. And then we talk about uh, adding our art, Bible journaling, to God's art, God's Word. Um, hi, Gail. So uh, this is how it goes. For the first 15 minutes, uh, we just chit-chat about um, what we're learning. And then we take a 15-minute break. Um, sometimes, um, you know, our break might be a little bit shorter uh, depending on how much we go over in our first 15 minutes segment. And so um, this time we might go over because I was eight minutes late trying to find the live button. Um, and then we come back for 15 minutes and it's just Bible journaling. And so you watch me Bible journal and hopefully I will teach you a few tips about Bible journaling. Um, Gail, you've already put... Um, a prayer request on there. Thank you. Uh, it is my honor to, to pray for you and pray for your hubby. I will definitely add that to my prayer prayer list um, for tonight. Okay, so tonight we are talking about, um, hi Chrissy, how are you? Uh, how was your day? Let's see, it says, oh good. Yeah, well I've looked forward to being with you too. Okay, so we have been talking about Bible journaling, how it starts with heart, and the heart of Bible journaling can be broken down um, into an acronym that I've developed, and um, it starts with the H, which is hear, hear the word. It moves on to E, which is experience the word. Excuse me. <clears throat> and then it moves on to A, which is ask about the word, um, which that's eh, sort of like a general... Uh, description of the A. So we'll get to that though um, the next in the following weeks. Um, and then R, which is repent, and then T, take, uh, take the word um, out into the world, or take the word and put it into your hearts. So yeah. So tonight we are talking about the H part, which is hearing the word. But first, let me show you how I finished my uh, page from last week. Okay. So last week we were in. Matthew, and um, we were already talking um, about hearing the word a little bit, um, and so Matthew 11, um, 16, is that right? 15, I didn't think that sounded right, 11, 15, I've been working on my memory verses, um, it's uh, he um, that has ears, let him hear, and so that was the, the uh, page that I Bible journaled, and I um, just showed you how to use uh, your stickers, and a fun way to make those stickers pop by tracing around them and um, taking what you've heard, you know, and we heard uh, the acronym broken down and um, put that in into our Bibles. And so I used my stickers to break down that acronym heart. And so that's how I finished uh, my Bible journaling. Now, I want to point out really quick this um, <laughs> this little heart right here. Listen, guys and gals. Um, don't be afraid to make mistakes. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so many people tell me I'm. I don't. I don't want to write in my Bible because I'm afraid I'll. I'll mess up, or I'm afraid I won't like it. Even if you don't really care for it, it's the fact that you're adding your art to God's art and combining that. You're. You have that relationship, that connection that you're making with God's Word and being with Him, and He. He loves that mess messy um art and all so don't be don't let that stop you uh, be courageous and and get into god's word and be creative with it remember 
If you don't want to write in your Bible, if you just don't feel comfortable, that's okay. That's the Holy Spirit telling you, don't. So don't. You can always get a special journal and use that um, as your Bible journal and put your Bible journaling in that. But this little heart right here, <laughs> when I did my acronym, the H is supposed to be for here, um, and I wrote heart. Yeah, nobody pointed that out to me. Thanks. <laughs> um, so I just covered up the T with a, with a heart, and it looks great, right? Yeah, so don't be afraid to make mistakes. Um, God, we're not a mistake. We are not a mistake. God's word is not a mistake. And so, um, but we do mess up because we're human and uh, we live in a fallen world and, and God wants us to bring those messy uh, mistakes to him so that he can make it right. And look what he did. He made my heart here the way it was supposed to be. So anyway, all right, let's um, talk a little bit now because it seems like I've got um, some people um, tuning in. And so we're going to go ahead and talk about the here part of um, heart, the acronym. And that's what we're focusing on today. So what I want to talk to you about today is the book of Nehemiah. Have you ever studied it? Can I get um, some of those likes and hearts and thumbs ups um, popping up if, if you've studied the book of Nehemiah? And if you haven't, I highly recommend that you at least read through it. It's, it's a kind of a short book, so it's not a long read. And um, you can definitely do it very quickly. Um, honestly, I would say within an hour. And that's just reading through it, not even trying to understand it. But it's very easy to understand, um, especially if you have a version of the Bible that you um, can really appreciate. Um, Kathy says she's read it. I uh, haven't studied it in depth. I highly recommend you study it in depth. It's really good. Um, and it's great about the brokenness in our lives, God's calling, um, unity. Oh, my goodness. There's just so much good stuff. In the book of Nehemiah and so tonight what I want to come to you with is um, chap specifically chapters um, 8 and 9 uh, let me pull it up here on my iPad real quick my iPad is old so it's gonna take a little while <laughs> okay here we go come on Okay, so in the book, uh, or in the, uh, chapters 8 and 9, the wall is pretty much finished. Oh, let me back up. All right, so the Israelites have all been um, dispersed and separated uh, because of um, their sin, and God had uh, prophesied, warned them that they were going to be separated. And so this was after they had been separated and sent to many different lands. Um, God was now calling them back together uh, to rebuild the temple, rebuild the city of Jerusalem, and rebuild the wall. It had been in, in ruins, and the wall, which was really to protect the city, um, was completely demolished. Um, uh, many of the, the sections of the wall were completely gone, and so um, it left Jerusalem at a very vulnerable um, state. And so God uh, called the Israelites back, uh, specifically Nehemiah, to rebuild the wall and bring his city back to um, uh, its glory, back to where it was supposed to be. And so Nehemiah followed uh, God's call, and um, he was in a distant land working for another king. Uh, the king granted him. Um, uh, it, I'm getting a little more into it than what I want to because the, really what I want, to, want you to hear is um, chapters 8 and 9. So read the book. Uh, Nehemiah for sure. All right, so um, so they went back, uh, built the wall, and now this is at a, at a part where the wall is is finally built. And um, hold on, because I want to read it to you. I have the link right here. And if you have your Bibles or um, an iPad, another. Um, a device that you can pull it up uh, you can read along with me so we're in Nehemiah uh, chapters 8 and 9 um, this time uh, right now specifically 8 but I also want to pull up 9 too okay so I have um, the NIV version and in the first pap first chapter of Nehemiah 8 um, it says all the people came together as one in the square before the water gate 
they told Ezra, the teacher um, of the law, to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded for Israel. So on the first day of the seventh, seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women and all who were able to understand. That's key, all who were able to understand. Do you remember the verse that we talked about um, last week? And I just read it to you from Matthew. Um, he that has ears, let him hear. It doesn't just mean just listen. It means if you have the ability to understand, then listen up. So um, he read it aloud from daybreak. Let's see. I want to back up and read that one more time. Um, he uh, brought the law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women and all who were able to understand, meaning um, children. You know, if, if they were old enough to understand, they were there too. He read it aloud from daybreak till noon as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men, women, and others who could understand, and all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. And then it goes on to talk about um, the different priests that were there, and um, I want you to hear this next part in verse... Six, Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. And then I'm going to move on to chapter 9, where it says, um, and, uh, oh, I don't have my calendar with me, my planner. Mm, hold on just a second. I'm going to see if it's over here real quick. Ugh, it's not. Okay, but this is really important. <laughs> if you were with us the first um, the first night, the first Monday night that we had this Bible journaling session, okay, so listen up in this. You, you might remember something. If not, I'll bring it back in just a second. Okay, so um, in chapter 9, it says, um, On the 24th day of the same month, so every day they were reading the law. Every day. So the law had been pretty much lost okay so they were all separated the israelites were all separated and god's word was far from them because um they really hadn't been practicing it they hadn't been reading it they hadn't been teaching it and so now um ezra has been brought it back to the people because the wall has been rebuilt and so on um, and so they've been reading it every day every day on the 24th day of the same month the israelites gathered together fasting and wearing sackcloth and putting oh, sorry this just yeah this really gets to me because they were fasting and wearing sackcloth and putting dust on their heads because they were they 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 were so overwhelmed with having not had the book, not having had the law. So you're going to you're going to understand why I'm about ready to cry here in just a second when I bring back what we talked about um that first Monday night. It's God is so good, um guys and gals. So those um, of Israelite descent, let's see here, they stood, they stood in their places and confessed their sins and their sins of their ancestors. They stood there um, where they were, where they were and read from the book of the law of the Lord, their God, for a quarter of the day. Three hours they stood there and read the law. Or Ezra and the priests read the law and, and all of the people stood there and listened. I just that's fascinating to me. And they spent another quarter in confession and worshiping God. So listen, remember they had to hear the word first. That's our H. And then they confessed and worshiped. That's our R, right? That's coming up, right? In heart. So this is how we Bible journal. When we follow that heart acronym, we hear the word first, and then eventually we do have to address the repentance part before we can actually give thanksgiving and take the word out into the world. Okay, so standing on the stairs were the priests, and they said, Stand up, praise the Lord your God, who is from everlasting to everlasting. Right here, the first Monday, this is what I talked about. I mentioned this verse. Do you remember that? Remember, I did a sample page outside of my Bible to show you that you do not have to Bible journal in your Bibles. You can do it in a special notebook notebook and I do mine in my planner my, my prayer planner and so remember on the back side of that page that I have the picture of my children 
I mentioned, I don't know why, but God just kept leading me to the verse in Nehemiah 9, 7, um, I'm sorry, uh, 5 through 8, or 5 through 9, 5 through 8. And so I wrote that out on that backside of my sample page. Do you remember that? How cool is that? And then for tonight, God totally take, took me to the reading of the law, and here it is. So chapter nine starts in verse five, uh, the second part of, of verse five. Blessed be the glorious, your glorious name, and may it be exalted above all blessing and praise. You alone are the Lord. You made the heavens, even the highest heavens, and all their starry hosts, the earth and all that is on it, the seas and all that is in them. You give life to everything, and the multitudes of heaven worship you. And it goes on in seven. You are the Lord God who chose Abram and brought him out of Ur and the Chaldeans and named him Abraham. You found his heart faithful to you. See, there we have the heart, okay? There we have the heart. And you made the covenant with him to give him his descendants of the land. And then it names the lands, and you have kept your promise because you are righteous. Amen. Wow, this is so good. Okay, so here we have the Israelites standing for hours hearing the word. Now, I am really going over in time, but this is so good. You all have to hear this. Um, hold on just a second. This is so cool. Um, I want you guys to hear something, guys and gals, because <laughs> hopefully we have some guys here. I don't know. I know I have a lot of girls. <laughs> all right. Um, so I just want you to hear something really quick about hearing the word about hearing re read words. Does that make sense? This is from brainscape.com. When we read, we are using our visual pathways to form memory links. We remember the material because it was something we saw. People who have photogenic memories are extraordinarily good at making these kinds of memory connect connections. For the rest of us, relying on only visual memory may leave us with many gaps, and so we have to find other ways to remember things. When reading out loud, this is good, when reading out loud, we form auditory links in our memory pathways. We remember ourselves saying it out loud and so not only form visual but also auditory links you're actually causing your brain to grow when you read out loud how about that so my challenge to you is to take those verses in Nehemiah Nehemiah 5b through 8 did I say 8 and read those, or at least seven, and read those out loud during our little break. Do it. Look it up. Read it out loud. And then when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about putting some of that into our Bibles. Okay? I'll see you in just a bit. <laughs> 